Right, here we go. We have a question from a recent test I've given to my upper six class R, cos x minus alpha type question. And we have this curve, and it shows you the equation y equals 6 cos x plus 2.5 sine x between 0 and 2 pi. And we want to express this in the form R cos x minus alpha, where R and alpha are constants, and R is bigger than 0, and alpha is between 0 and pi over 2. And it's asked us to give alpha to three decimal places. OK, so let's work out what the expansion of r cos x minus alpha is. So we write down r cos x minus alpha. And that's going to give me r cos x cos alpha plus r sine x sine alpha. OK, because cos x minus alpha is cos x cos alpha sine x sine alpha. But if we times it all by r, we get this. And what we realize is that if you match this up here, there's your cos x and your cos x, and there's your sine x and there's your sine x. So we're left with 6 equals r cos alpha, and we're left with the 2.5 equals r sine alpha, if I just move that circle. And so we can form equations r cos alpha equals 6, and we know that r sine alpha equals 2.5. Now, r squared is all... If you square these and add these together, the cos squared plus sine squared can, equals 1, so cancels out. So we always end up with r squared equals 6 squared plus 2.5 squared. That's, you can learn that off by heart, and that's fine to do that. OK, so therefore, r squared equals... 36 plus 6.25, that's going to give me 42.25, and I think R comes out as 6.5 when you square root that. Now, if we divide, let's make do equation 1 and equation 2, and we do 1 divided by 2, and I suggest you always do this because it's also important to match up the signs, and the signs can make a difference here. So if you get into the habit of always doing this, you get R sine alpha over r cos alpha. Do always do it like this. Don't take any shortcuts and you won't ever get it wrong. Gives you 2.5 over 6. The cars cancel, so tan alpha equals 2.5 over 6. So therefore, when you inverse that, you get alpha is about 0.395 when you use your calculator to calculate that in radians. Okay? It does say give alpha to three decimal places, and it's got to be in radians between 0 and pi. Find the coordinates of the points of the graph where the C, cross, the C crosses the coordinate axes. So where C crosses the coordinate axes. So what this alpha does is it translates our whole graph to the right by a value of alpha. So therefore, this point would normally cross at pi by 2, but this is going to be pi by 2 plus alpha. And this would normally cross at 3 pi by 2. So this is 3 pi by 2 plus alpha as well. And this point here, we just need to make x equal to 0. So if you make x equal to 0 here, OK, so we've got r cos, so we've got 6.5 plus cos of 0.395, and I think that comes out as 6. So across the axes at 0, 6, and then we're going to have pi by 2 plus alpha, which comes out as 1.97, comma 0. And then we've got 3 pi by 2 plus alpha, which comes out at 5.11. OK, so those are our three points where it crosses the axes. So this is one, this 1.970 is here, this 5.110 is here, and then this 6 is here on my graph. A student records the number of hours of daylight each Sunday throughout the year. She starts last Sunday in May, recording of 18 hours, and continues her final recording 52 legs. She models her results with a continuous function by 12 plus 6 cos... Let's think of this as x and 2.5 sine x. It's exactly the same function, except instead of x, we've got 2 pi t over 52. So what we're doing is we're letting x is equal to 2 pi t over 52 here. 
okay? And you've got an extra 12 added on. So to find the maximum and minimum values, effectively what we're saying, if we have h is equal to 12 plus cos 6, 6 cos 2 pi t over 52 plus 2.5 sine 2 pi t over 52. If we think of this value here as our x, and you've still got the 6 and the 2.5 here, then effectively what we've got, is we've got h equals 12 plus 6.5, because r was 6.5, cos 2 pi over t, so 2 pi t over 52, minus that alpha 0.395. So the max and min, so the max is when the cos curve equals 1, so therefore 6.5 added on to 12.5 is going to be 18.5, and the min will be when we take away the 6.5 from 12, so therefore the min will equal 5.5. Okay. So what you need to do is spot this is exactly the same function here, and we can use this trick to just speed things up. You could differentiate it, you could do all sorts of ways of doing it, but this is by far the quickest way using what we've worked out already. Now D, the values of T, we want to find out the values of T for when H is equal to 16. Give your answers to the nearest whole number. So we're going to have 16 equals 12 plus 6.5 cos... 2 pi over t, 2 pi t, sorry, over, over 52 minus 0.395. And therefore, we divide by, uh, take off 12, we get 4, so we're going to get 4 over 6.5 equals cos of 2 pi t over 52 minus 0.395. So... What we do is we work out inverse cos of this and we get 0 0.91 is equal to 2 pi t over 52 minus 0 0.395. Now at the point where we do the inverse cos, okay, we've got to work out the other values. So we had this value at 0 0.91 because this is um, here. So this one here is going to be 2 pi minus 0.91. So you've also got 2 pi minus 0.91 will equal to all of that. And you've got to calculate both of those. And then what we do is we add the 3.95, we times by 52, and we divide by 2 pi. And therefore we get t will equal um, 10.78 or 47.75. So that's equal to 11 or 48 to the nearest whole number. Okay, so just remember, find your inverse at the stage where you do, so find the other value, sorry, at the stage where you do inverse cos. So find it here. A common mistake is to take away the 0 0.395 and times by and then start looking for other values using the cos curve. And then you've not got the cos curve, you've got this curve, and that's very hard to know where the other values are. Everybody should know the shape of the cos curve, and you should know how often it repeats. And you should realise this point is 2 pi, so therefore this distance here is exactly the same as this distance. So this distance here is exactly the same as this distance here.